Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for another another little radio video. Today is October 18th, 2021. It's about 1755 UTC, which is 1255 p.m. here in sunny southern Illinois. A very nice day outside. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my radios that I've had for a very, very long time. I purchased it from Universal Radio back in around Christmas time, 1991. Now, according to the serial number of the radio, it was manufactured October 1991, so that makes it exactly 30 years old this month. So, the radio I'm talking about, I still have it, and I still use it on a regular basis. And the radio I'm talking about is my original Drake R8. 30 years old today. And, well not today, but 30 years old this month. And, as I said, I purchased this from Universal Radio back in 1991, around Christmas. Um... I did not get the VHF converter board put in there. I also had, later on, I had a Drake R8A model. It had the, the mode buttons and the bandwidth buttons right here and a couple little tweaks. But I had to sell that because of some medical issues I had. And that one, the R8 brought a little more money. But I kept my R, this R8 because it has the optical encoder in it. And I also have a re remote control box that I bought for it. You can see it right there on top. And it uses a remote control. I can remote control it. This is a DSP box. And this radio, I sent it in about every six years, I guess, to... Just to Drake to have it checked out, just to make sure everything. And I think in 30 years it had one um, capacitor replaced. When they originally made these, they used some capacitors that tended to go leaky. This one wasn't leaking yet, but they went ahead and, re and replaced it out. That was uh, 94 maybe. And they would always check the alignment and everything and make sure and, and clean the, the pots and stuff. But it basically looks like it did when it was brand new. Works like it does when it was brand new. And I've had a lot of good listening on this receiver. I mean, every time I use it, it takes me back to the days of there in the 90s and early 2000s when all the big powerhouse stations like Deutsche Welle and the BBC was beaming to North America. You can still hear the BBC, but... They don't beam to North America now, but you can still hear them. But Deutsche Welle, Radio Berlin, uh, just all in big stations like that. Radio Australia that left in shortwave in 2017. But there's still a lot of stuff to listen to. And I, um, I use uh, SDRs quite a bit now. I have my ICOM, ICR8600, and my... SDR Play RSP DX that I use, but I still really like these old receivers and I like to tune around on them. I like the way they sound. And I use this one probably a couple times a week. And uh, it still works flawlessly. Alignment's perfect. And in fact, I'll, like I said, I got the remote control box, so we'll turn it on. All you gotta do is hit the power button. Display comes on, displays real nice now. It being about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, conditions are not really good right now until the evening. But this is WWV. At the tone, 17 hours, 59 minutes, coordinated universal time. And we can go up to 15. And that one's coming in better. Still has a great sound. Pass band, pass band offset, squelch, volume, RF gain. 
the synchronous detector, these were the very early sync detectors on these Drakes. And they've evolved a lot since then. Even today, though, you still get some radios with some crappy sync detectors in them. This one is kind of half, I guess you would say. Sometimes it seems like it works good. Sometimes not. But some people use the sync on these Drakes wrong. See, the, the Drake R8, the original R8, it has... Um, sideband synchronous detection but you don't turn the synchronous detector on and then select upper and lower sideband what you do on these and this is coming from a Drake tech he said you, you tune your station in set your bandwidth set your pass band control to where it sounds the best then turn your sync on and that's what I do and it seems like it works a whole lot better other times if the sync doesn't work good I just select either the upper or lower sideband and on an AM station and just tune it like it's a sideband and open the, open the bandwidth up a little bit but the the optical encoder is still smooth you can just spin that thing and it will go around and around but it, the display is real nice and smooth it's nice and bright let me get back to WWV And it's it sounds just great, you know. You got to have an outboard speaker and stuff like that, but it does have an internal speaker, and yeah, it sounds okay. But I, I've got a uh, kind of one I made. You can see it sitting right there. But this receiver has never let me down. It still sounds great. And you know, we can my noise floor today is about a three, I guess. I'm on a I'm a, right now I'm on a magnetic loop. Like I said, right now is not the best time of the day for shortwave listening. We're kind of in that little dead zone up until about 4 p.m. I can turn the DSP on. That little whine you hear in there, that's my uh, HVAC system. It, it came on, so you get a little bit of whine, but when it goes off, it disappears. very it's still a very very good receiver very solid and like I said right now we're in a very bad time to 31 or not 31 but 25 meters might be a little something there but there's a faint station these drakes are very, we're very, very sensitive to. This one's got great sensitivity.
estaba completamente vacunado, queremos agradecer al personal médico del Centro Médico Nacional Walter Reed por su But yeah, it's a uh, it's a very good receiver still to this day, and you can find these pretty rare, pretty commonly on eBay. They they range from a couple hundred dollars now to five hundred, depending on what condition they're in. If you want a vintage receiver and you can find one of these on eBay that hasn't been tampered with and is in good working order they're still a very very good receiver very capable of of anything and I would highly recommend if you want to get one of the prices right get one you won't be disappointed in it it's got a great pass band offset control Mode is AM, FM, not, not FM, local FM, but FM, CW, RTTY, lower and upper side band. Your band widths are 6, 4, 2.3, 1.8, and 0 0.5 for CW. You've got AGC slow, fast, and off. RF is, you got a preamp and attenuation. you got a, two antenna connectors, antenna 1, 2, and the converter if it's installed. And you got two VFOs, you got scanning, you can turn the, the display off if you want. You can see the clock, I don't have it set. It'll last for three seconds, then you can uh, hold this down. And you get AB antenna or AB noise blanker, a timer, notch filter, the step mode. And you can lock the dials. You get a, you can have it turn the beep on and off. And this is these up here for your scanning memories. You got 90, 99 memories. Uh, VFO to memory or memory to VFO. Frequency up and down. You got the tone control here and a notch filter. And I said optical encoder. You turn the sync on. A little light comes on. Time. And I have this hooked to a, a little clear speech um, CLR DSP box so I can kind of clear up the audio if I want from atmospheric noise. But yeah, it's a very, very good receiver. Tune sideband really well. Let me see if I can find some sideband and we'll uh, tune that. Okay, here's some here's some sideband on 14.256. In there from Iowa, so we just had a we had a good bunch of check-ins. Of course, we had you in there too. Now I didn't hear you yesterday. I could hear you on the uh, the remote receiver, but I couldn't hear you locally there yesterday. So sounds like the band may actually be a little better than it was yesterday there, over. But the one thing um, I like about this remote control unit that hooks to the computer interface on the back of here is one of the big complaints about the R8 was these mode buttons, you know, you had the carousel type. So if you want to go to lower sideband, you had to go through a AM, FM, CW, RTTY to get back there. Well, with this remote, all you have to do is press a couple of keys. So, 8, 6 is AM, 8, 1 is lower side, 8, 2, or is, is lower side band, 8, 1 is upper side. So, you can just, you can just jump back and forth without all the WWV. So yeah, um, the Drake R8, this one here, from manufactured in October 1991, and here it is October 2021. 
30 years later, still working perfect, still looks perfect. Still a great sensitive receiver, alignment's dead on. And um, yeah, you pass bands are all aligned. Very good audio circuit in it. Tunes all the modes really well. Optical encoder. Smooth tuning. I mean, there's not much weight to this tuning knob, but it's very, very smooth. Volume, RF gain, sync detector, analog power meter, all calibrated. Tone notch, scanning 99 presets, which isn't a lot compared to what you know you have today. But it's still a good old vintage receiver to tune around on and to have if you want to, if you want to get one i said you can find them on ebay anywhere from 200 to 500 maybe i wouldn't pay any more probably than three 350 maybe 400 if it's in a shape like this one this one's in almost near mint and because uh, i really take care of my stuff it's covered up when it's not in use and unplugged Antennas are disconnected. I'm not using it. So yeah, it's a it's a very good receiver. If you in the market for a vintage receiver, never had one, you want one, this is a good option to, to consider. Uh, just go to eBay or somewhere and type Drake R8 in, and you should find some. But it still works great. Still looks great. I still enjoy tuning around on it, and. Um, even though, like I said, I, I use SDRs quite a bit now, and I, I've been shortwave listening for almost 40 years now, about 39 years this year. And uh, I think I've, you know, a lot of people like SDRs, some people don't like them. I think if you're a serious shortwave radio listener or whatever, you know, technology is moving forward, you have to embrace that. I think. That's why I like to have both. When I, when I want to tune on my vintage radio here on this Drake, I can. But at the same time, I'm very comfortable with and using SDRs. And I like the, the convenience SDRs have where you can see the signal and unlimited bandwidths and stuff like that. But that doesn't take away how I feel about these receivers. I still like them, but I think if you're a serious radio listener, you should have both in your shack. But SDRs and analog receivers, whether it be vintage or one of the newer portables or whatever it is, but use both. That way you've got all your bases covered and you don't miss out on anything. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching everyone. And um, yeah, Drake R8, 30 years old this month, October 2021. So. Yeah, it's still working great, still a great receiver, still really like it. So thanks for watching everyone, and uh, take care, and we'll see you on the next one.